Hello guys, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. So yesterday, 18th January, the exam for the ATO COC written was conducted and I got the question paper. Many of the students were telling me that the question was uh, very new, pattern was changed and so difficult paper was. But let me tell you, all the questions were repeated except one question that was only new to me that is, that is also in the safety part. But technical, all the questions were repeated. But uh, yeah, uh, the questions were not from the last one year paper, but in some or other time the question was asked in the exam and all the answers were there in the pdf which i have already uh, given you guys to find the answers so all the questions came from the same pdfs which i have told and if those who have studied all those pdfs they must have answered all the questions but uh, those who have not studied those pdf they will be finding it difficult because questions were little tough i also believe the paper was little tough so many mixed questions was there but all the questions were same and repeated except one question, question number seven. So let us go to see the discussion of the question paper. I will tell you all the answers and from here to find how to find and how to make answers. What are the points to include in your answers? So let's start the question paper discussion. Okay, so let us start the discussion with first section one, question number one. So the first question from the high voltage power system, the same question was asked in month of September in 2023. And answer to this question you can find in PDF MET in page number 21. Along with the answers at page number 21 in MET PDF, I would also like you to read the answer from the chat GPT which I will also show you. There you can find the more uh, structured and better answer than this. First I will take you to answer in the MET PDF. So, okay, so here is the question. The same question was asked in February 2029 also and all this year the same question was asked. So let us first read what is the question. With respect to high voltage power system installation, explain the different types of circuit breaker that are used, comparing them on merits and demerits. Also describe the theory of arc phenomenon and the mechanism fitted to mitigate the arc. So it is simple that you have to explain the different types of circuit breakers and what are the advantage and what are the disadvantage with respect to high voltage system and in the end how the arc phenomena is created and how it is what mechanism is used to mitigate the arc. So I will for better answer I will take you to chat GPT where you can find the more better answer. So the first circuit breaker is ACB air circuit breaker what are the merits suitable for high voltage system cost effective for low to medium voltage range simple design and maintenance demerits limited interrupting capacity compared to other types and long arcing time other type is oil circuit breaker merit is high interrupting capacity effective arc quenching suitable for high voltage application what are the demerits environmental concerns due to oil uses regular maintenance Usually this oil circuit breaker is not used in marine uh, system so you can remove this answer. Now the vacuum circuit breaker which is mostly used in the marine field for the high voltage system. So for the high voltage system usually the voltage is greater than 1000 volt. So what are the merits of that fast arc quenching minimum inter maintenance or and environmental friendly no gases or no oils. What are the demerits higher initial cost compared to some alternatives. Other one is SF6 circuit breaker, merit is excellent arc quenching properties, compact design and low maintenance, demerit is SF6 is a potent greenhouse gas contributing to environmental concerns and cost of SF6 is also high. So this SF6 circuit breaker is also not, not used in the marine field due to its uh, pollution creating uh, properties. Next is gas circuit breaker, merits effective for high voltage application suitable for interrupting high currents demerits complex design maintenance can be challenging other types are also hybrid circuit breakers solid state circuit breakers so you don't have to mention so many things in this but since chat gpt is there it will give you all the answers and i would suggest you to make your own notes in your own words because if you make these answers by yourself you can remember it for long time for the exam purpose so don't just copy and paste the answers from from some pdf or some from some notes to read from that get an idea and make your own notes in your own words so now let's go to the next part of the question which is arc phenomena and mechanism fitted to mitigate the arc so first of all you should know what is arc and how it is created so basically arc phenomena in electrical system occurs when an electric current flows through a medium 
usually between two conductor surface and ionizing this surrounding gases forming a conductive plasma channel this ionized channel contains the current flow creating an arc the arc phenomena is common in various electrical devices like switches circuit breakers and contactors so how it is initiate, initiated the arc initiates when the contacts begins to separate as the gap widens the dielectric strength of medium is exceeded uh, causing ionization of and formation of an arc arc formation once initiated arc channel consists of highly energized and ionized gases this plasma conducts electric current across the gap arc continuation the arc continues as long as there is sufficient energy to maintain ionization it produces intense heat light and pressure now this is about the arc uh, creation now how, how the arc is mitigated now there are there can be various methods one is arc chutes magnetic blowout cooling technique use of arc quenching media that is sf6 vacuum or the forced air arc resistant equipment current zero interruption so all these methods are used in which dip, in, from here only different types of circuit breaker, breaker comes how the medium of arc quenching that is what the circuit breaker is so if the sf6 chemical is used so that is a sf6 circuit breaker if vacuum is used that is a vacuum circuit breaker if air is used it is air circuit breaker so understanding the arc phenomenon and implementing effective mitigation strategies are crucial for enhancing the safety reliability and longevity of electrical equipments in various application let us move to the question number 2 under what condition can you produce sustained oscillations classify oscillation with respect to frequency range principle involved etc it is possible to produce oscillation with rc network in phase with phase shift oscillator discuss in details the same question was asked in january 2023 and answer you can find in my notes rahul page number 43 so let's go to rahul's note this is my note you must you all must be having this note page number 43 this answer same question april 2023 and january 2023 this question was asked so the condition under which sustained oscillation can be produced is three condition oscillator is an amplifier circuit with positive feedback following are three conditions for sustained oscillation it should have positive feedback and phase shift near circuit needs to be either 360 or 0 degree and loop gain should be equal or greater than 1 now next part is classify oscillation with respect to frequency range so based on frequency range audio frequency oscillator radio frequency oscillator vhf oscillator uhf oscillator and microwave oscillator now these are the frequency range given audio is 20 hertz to 20000 hertz radio is 20000 to 30 megahertz vhf is 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz uhf is 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and microwave is greater than gigahertz now the electronic oscillator may be broadly classified into following two categories one is oscillator which produce an output having a sine wave form are called sinusoidal or harmonic oscillator such oscillators can provide frequency range from 20 hertz to gigahertz so sinusoidal or harmonic oscillator these oscillators use a tuned circuit consisting of inductor and capacitor and and are used to generate high frequency signals they are also known as radio frequency oscillator such oscillators are hartley and colpitts oscillator rc horse oscillator these oscillators are these oscillators use resistor and capacitor and are used to generate low or audio frequency signals thus they are also known as audio frequency oscillators such oscillators are phase shift and wind bridge oscillator crystal oscillator these oscillators use quartz crystal and are used to generate highly stabilized output signal with frequency up to 10 megahertz the pierce oscillator is an example of crystal oscillator negative resistance oscillator this use negative resistance characteristic of devices such as tunnel diode a tuned diode oscillator is an example of negative resistor resistance oscillator now, now in the second part is non sinusoidal or relaxation oscillator these oscillators which provide output having a square rectangular or saw tooth waveform are called non sinusoidal 
such oscillators can provide output at a frequency from 0 to 20 megahertz only now in the second part of the question oscillation with rc network in a phase shift so use rc network to provide phase shift excellent frequency stability and can yield pure sine wave for wide range of load frequency can be varied by changing either resistor or capacitor in general resistors are kept constant while capacitors are gang tuned so this is the circuit diagram of a rc phase oscillator so basically uh, combination of capacitor and resistors are used so there is three set of uh, rc network is used each circuit provides 60 degree of phase difference so total we are getting a 180 degree phase difference so 180 degree phase shift is given from here and 180 degree phase shift is given by the rc stage so total phase shift is 360 degree that is the second conditions of the three conditions which we uh, read in the beginning phase shift near circuit needs to be either 360 degree or 0 degree for a sustained oscillation so this is a diagram of rc phase oscillator in which we are using a operational amplifier and another diagram rc phase shift oscillator using bjt amplifier in common emitter configuration 180 degree phase shift by amplifier and feedback is rc circuit so this is the rc series circuit guys if anybody is finding difficulty in understanding this topic i would suggest you to go to youtube and search rc phase shift oscillator you will get so many videos in which you can study you can read in very simple terms i have also done the same thing all these explanations diagrams and everything i got from the youtube only let's move to question number three with reference to condition monitoring of electrical machinery state the important parameters that may be recorded part b explain how the parameters are measured and what defects may be revealed so this question also repeated many times i don't have the idea the latest in which month it was repeated but you can find the answer in my notes page number 21 and MET page number 41 so let's go to my notes page 21 let's look at the answer condition monitoring form of prevention maintenance so this we are doing it before the circuit is going to break down so is that in which equipment is regularly monitored and tested regular insulation testing and vibration testings are two form of condition monitoring all electrical equipments has insulation the purpose is to keep electric current within the conductor and to prevent contact with the wires. The electrical resistance of insulation must be very high in megahertz to prevent any current leaking away from the conductor. Insulation resistance is measured between conductor and earth. Insulation is usually measured by a megger. Second one is vibration measurement. Vibration monitoring provides the condition by machinery body intact position and condition of full bearings every machinery has vibration characteristic at the time of installation when operating satisfactory this provides a standard against which the future vibration measured will be compared to analyze the deviation and diagnose fault and decide maintenance required for the measurement of insulation resistance ensure to follow code of safe working practice disconnect the equipment to be tested lock out tag out and validate isolation before doing the test check the testing equipment for proper functioning it is very important to discharge capacitor before and after making insulation test you should discharge about four times longer as the voltage was applied during the test check current leakage at switch fuse boxes or other connections never do insulation resistance test on energized circuit so actually in this answer i have mentioned only about the insulation testing and vibration testing but there are other parameters also which has to be checked when we are doing the condition monitoring of the equipment so let's see what are the other parameters that has to be measured vibration we have already seen the purpose of this test is detects mechanical issues such as misalignment unbalance and bearing defects measurement technique accelerometer or vibration sensor are used to measure vibration levels and frequencies Temperature. Elevated temperature can indicate issues such as overloading, insulation degradation or friction, infrared thermography or direct temperature sensor on critical components measurement technique. Current and voltage. Monitors electrical performance and detects anomaly anomalies like unbalanced loads or phase fault. Current and voltage sensor provide real-time data for analysis. Power quality. Ensures stable and efficient operation by monitoring parameters like voltage, sag, swells, harmonics and power factor. 
power quality analyzer and meters are used for continuous monitoring if it is a oil immersed transformer the oil quality insulation resistance we have already seen assesses the integrity of insulation system measurement technique megometer measures insulation resistance to identify potential breakdowns so you can mention all these uh, parameters also and you can explain any one or two parts like in, in my answer i have explained the two um, explain the insulation resistance part how it is measured so you can add one or two more techniques in your answers because in the question they are asking explain how these parameters are measured and what defects may be revealed so from this part you can see the purpose why we are doing this type of test so what we are getting what faults we can find out from doing this states test so with this now section one is completed now let's move on to section two so question 4a describe the normal criteria used for setting thermal protective relays and their advantages compared to the magnetic types so this this is a six part questions i don't uh, have idea when was this question recently asked but this question has been asked in the uh, previous years and this uh, this question is also there in one of the pdfs and answer is also available but i would take you to answers given by the chat gpt it's a very beautiful answer structured answers you are getting there so the thermal protection relays are designed to safeguard electric motors from overheating the setting of these relays involves considering the motor's full load current and its thermal time constant which represents how quickly the motor heats up so what are the characteristic full load current this is the maximum current a load draws under normal operating condition thermal relays are set to trip when the current exceeds this for a extended period thermal time constant this parameter reflects the time it takes for the motor to reach a critical temperature it's crucial for accurately determining when the motor is experiencing sustained overloads now what are the advantages over the magnetic types sensitivity to sustained overloads thermal relays are more effective in detecting the prolonged overloads as they respond to the gradual temperature rise in the motor magnetic relays might not be as sensitive to these situations adaptability to load changes thermal relays account for the thermal characteristic of motor allowing for better adaptation to varying loads magnetic relays may be less responsive to these dynamic conditions motor longevity by precisely monitoring temperature thermal relays help prevent overheating reducing the risk of motor damage and extending extending its operational life so let's move on to part b of question number four this is a numerical question which was asked in july 2023 in which i have given my written exam so i remember this question very well and i answered this question and this same answer is there in my notes also page number 74 so let's move on to my notes to get this answer so let's first read the question once the low voltage release of an ac motor starter consists of a solenoid in which an iron plunger is drawn against a spring the resistance of the solenoid is 35 ohm so this is one parameter is given r when connected to 220 volt 50 hertz ac supply the current taken is first 2 amps and when the plunger is drawn into the full in position the current falls to 0 0.7 amps calculate the inductance of solenoid for both position of the plunger and the maximum value of flux linkage in weber turns for the full in position of the plunger so in first case when the plunger is full out the current is 2 amps and it is in full in position current is 0 0.7 amps so let's get the answer to this the given part is r 35 ohms voltage 220 current 220 uh, current is 2 amps and frequency is 50 hertz when the plunger is out so from this we can calculate the total impedance z that is v by i so i we already have 2 amps so 220 by 10 we have we got the total impedance to 110 ohm now we have r so now we can easily calculate the x part from this because since this is a inductor it will have resistance and inductance both so x is equal to root z square minus r square so we can get this to 104 ohm this is the inductance now this is the condition when the plunger was out when the plunger was in the current was 0 0.7 amps so in that case we can calculate this z at 220 by 0 0.7 we get 314 ohms and in this case the x is 
we got the 312.3 ohms so in the question they are asking inductance of solenoid for both position of the plunger so we can find out the inductance so we all know that xl is given by 2 pi f l so we from here we have to find out the l so l will be xl by 2 pi f the same thing is done here so in the first case when the plunger was out we had the x is equal to 104 so we are taking that as a l1 so 104 by 2 pi f f is already given 50 so we are getting as 0 0.332 and in the case of l2 when the plunger was in we got the x is equal to 312.3 so we are getting as 0 0.995 and the next part is maximum value of flux linkage in Weber turns for the full in position of the plunger. So maximum flux linkage. So flux linkage is given by L into I. So maximum flux linkage into L into I max. So L we already know 0 0.995 here we got and I is 0 0.7 amps and since they are asking maximum so we are multiplying by root 2 because 0 0.7 is the RMS value. So maximum value is multiplied by root 2 we are getting 0 0.985 Weber turns this is a very simple question so you don't have to get worried after reading the long question answer is you can see just half page answer only just two calculation calculating x in case 1 x in x case 2 then calculating l1 l2 and then calculating maximum linkage from here now let's move on to question number 5a state briefly the meaning of expression star connected as applied to three phase ac practice what is the ratio of maximum line voltage to the maximum phase voltage in each case now this question it's it's a new i would i would not say it is a new question because similar question related to star connection and delta connection were asked in july 2023 Let's have a look at the 2023 question July pair. With the aid of a star and delta connection diagram, a state basic equation from which a star and delta conversion equation can be derived. So similar question on the similar concept. So question is not new. So here they are asking what is the meaning of a star connected, what does it imply and what is the maximum phase voltage to the line voltage. So answer to this question you can see in three phase AC practice, star connected refers to a configuration where the ends of three windings are connected to form a common point usually denoted as a neutral point this configuration is also known as y connection what is the ratio of maximum line voltage to maximum phase voltage in each case so in a star case as you all must be aware the ratio is v line is equal to root 3 into v phase so uh, line voltage is root 3 times of the phase voltage so in the first part they are only asking of the meaning of the expression star connected but if you see the second part of the question the question they are asking in voltage phase and line voltage in each case so other case can only be the delta connection and since it is a six mark question you just can't write the definition of a star connected and one formula so it's better to explain about the delta connection also and what is the voltage relation between phase and line you can also mention about the current also in this case because it's a six mark questions you also have to fill your pages answer sheets also so you can answer your uh, answer this question accordingly let's move on to part b determine the line current taken by 440 three phase star connected motor having an output of 45 kilowatt at 0 0.8 lagging power factor and an efficiency of 93 percent it's a very very simple question so here is the solution given efficiency is given efficiency is output by input we note efficiency is 93 percent and input is sorry output is 45 kilowatts so we can calculate the input from here so input we are getting by 45 by 0 0.93 we are getting at 48.38 this is the input supply and power is given by root 3 into vl into il into cos phi so 48.38 is equal to root 3 into 440 is the given supply voltage we have to calculate the line current 0 0.8 is the cos phi so il is equal to 48.38 by root 3 into 440 into 0 0.8 we are getting at 72.15 amps so it's a very very simple question that's less than five minutes it will take to solve this question let's move on to next question question 6a why is it important to maintain high efficiency of operation and low value of voltage regulation for the power transformers so this question was previously asked in December 2023. You can find the answer in 
Rahul so note page 94 so let's move on to this question question is here why it is important to have high efficiency and low voltage regulation so energy conservation power transformers are responsible for transferring electrical energy from one voltage to another by operating with higher efficiency energy loss minimizes during conversion process it conserves energy res resources and environmental impact it also leads to substantial cost saving now voltage regulation voltage regulation refers to ability of transformers to maintain the desired voltage level within a specified limit under varying load conditions a low value of voltage regulation ensures output voltage remains stable and within acceptable tolerance even when the load fluctuates this is important for proper functioning of electrical equipment and preventing damage due to under voltage and over voltage so this is the efficiency formula you can write and this is the voltage regulation no load minus full load by no load into 100 so it's a simple theoretical question from the transformer chapter let's move on to the next numerical part b a 20 kva 2000 by 220 volt single phase transformer has a primary resistance of 2.1 ohm and secondary resistance of 0 0.026 ohm the corresponding leakage reactants are 2.5 ohm and 0 0.03 ohm estimate the regulation at full load under power factor conditions of case 1 unity case 2 0 0.5 lagging and case 3 0 0.5 leading so this question uh, I, I, I haven't seen this recently asked in last one year but this question has been asked it is repeated it's not a new question then this question answer you can find in one pdf named sunil yadav electrical numerical coc page 83 of that pdf this answer is given also in similar question in mt 97 page number similar question is given it will slightly only difference but the concept is same used how to find the voltage regulation in different conditions so let's go to the solution part of this sunil yadav page 83 see the same question so let us first draw the diagram of the question with all the data given so 2.1 and 0.06 the primary 2.1 and 0.06 secondary resistance and corresponding leakage is 2.5 and 0.03 2.5 and 0.03 supply voltage is 2000 and the output is 220 volt now we got the circuit diagram of the question now only question uh, answer you have to find out the voltage regulation but for finding voltage regulation the so this is the formula of the voltage regulation of a transformer so in the case of lagging this is plus and in case of leading this is minus so this is the only difference so now what parameters we need as you can see from the formula we need i1 we need r1 dash and x1 dash r1 dash is the total resistance transferred to one side that is primary and leakage reactance also x1 dash that is transferred to the primary side so we all uh, we already have cos phi sin phi we have the v1 we only need to find out r1 dash x1 dash and i1 dash so let's find out the r1 dash first so for finding r1 dash r1 dash is once this secondary resistance r2 and x2 this is transferred to the primary side so now we have to transfer the parameters r2 and x2 to the primary side so for transferring these parameters to the primary side we will be multiplying by n1 by n2 square so now the final formula which you can see is r1 dash is equal to r1 plus r2 by k square and k is the transformer transformation ratio v2 by v1 so we are getting k is equal to 0 0.11 so finally we are getting r1 is equal to 4.25 ohm and x1 we are getting is 4.98 now we have the r1 and we have the x1 we can find the z1 so z1 dash is equal to r1 dash square plus x1 dash the whole over root so we are getting as 6.55 ohm from here now we can calculate the full load current so full load current will be given by p by v1 so p already we have 220 kilo and voltage is 2000 so we are getting i is equal to 10 amps now we are going to calculate the answer of our question which is voltage regulation so for the lagging voltage regulations we have positive here i1 into r1 dash cos phi plus x1 sin phi 
by v1 into 100 so in case of unity power factor the theta we are getting is equal to 0 and sine 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 so the final answer we are getting i we have 10 r1 we already found out 4.25 cos phi is 1 and since sine phi is 0 here because angle is 0 so this part becomes 0 so finally we are getting voltage regulation is 2.125 percent down now we are taking lag uh, second part 0 0.5 lagging power factor just put all the parameters in the formula and you will get the answers i1 is 10 4.25 cos phi is 0 0.5 given and sin phi we can calculate from here uh, cos phi 0 0.5 so phi will be 60 degree and sin phi will be 0 0.866 just put in the formula you will get answered 3.21 percent down and in case of leading leading power factor same thing put the all the parameters in the formula and you will get the answer minus 1.09 so that means in the case of leading power factor the voltage will be higher than the input so it's a question in which only you have to remember this formula what is the formula for voltage regulation of a transformer and when we are transferring the parameters from secondary to primary or primary to secondary how the con conversion takes place so as you can see here r1 plus r2 into n1 by n2 so when we are transferring from primary to secondary side this will be n2 by n1 so it will be opposite now let's move on to section 3 last part so first question in section 3 is write short notes on the following roles of classification society on SIP which acts as a recognized organization b enhance survey program and its applicability and c condition of class c o c so actually this is the question which i am seeing for the first time in eto ssap part so no problem we will find answer to this question also so let us ask answer of this question to the chat gbt so write short notes on classification society on ship who acted as a recognized organization we have got a beautiful structured answer so classification society are organization that play a crucial role in maritime safety and standards they are authorized by state flags to inspect survey and classify ships according to the established rules and regulations these societies ensure that vessels comply with safety environmental and operational standards contributing to overall maritime safety and reliability examples include lilod dnvgl abs etc so we'll see uh, roles of classification society in details First is safety standards, risk management, statutory compliance, quality assurance, environmental protection, research and development, emergency response, global standardization. So you, you can read all these parts and make a short answers out of all these points. So I'm not going to read complete these things. You can read and make a short answer for yourself. I have given the from where you can find the answers. No answer is also in front of you. Now the next question is enhanced survey program and its applicability. So let us go to Google for this answer. So marineinsight.com. This is a website where you can find the answer of this. So go through the website, read full details and make a notes out of all these things. Enhanced survey program is a guidelines for shipping companies and owners to prepare their ships for special survey to maintain the safety of the vessel while at sea or port. A survey program planning document for surveying and paperwork is to be developed by its owner and is to be submitted to the recognized authorities such as classification societies so there is nothing much in this to use your head just read all the uh, topics given here and make a short answer for yourself now let's move to the next question condition of class coc for this also let's uh, ask our google baba so here is the answer given what is the condition of class the answer is given by master rajiv jessel so full details is given what is con certificate of class and what is condition of class i request you to read this full topic and make an answer of your own it's nothing to use much of your head just make a half page answer out of this let's move on to the next question name various statutory certificates and documents to be carried on board chemical tankers giving reference to the conventions and justify for their requirements this answer is given in the sscp pdf 31 but that's a very long uh, answers and I don't find that much comfortable to read i will tell you the answer of this question from the chat gpt so here is what chat gpt has given chemical tankers being vessels that transport potential hazardous substance are subject to a specific regulation and conventions 
environmental protection operational integrity various certificates and documents must be carried on board as mandated by international conventions here are few certificates along with relevant conventions and justifications so the first one is international oil pollution prevention certificate reference marpol annex 1 justification ensures compliance with regulations for the prevention of oil pollution including provision for oil discharge monitoring equipment and oil filtering system number two International Pollution Prevention Certificate for the Carriage of Noxious Liquid Substance in Bulk, NLS Certificate. References is MARPOL Annex 2. It specifies the requirement for the transport of noxious liquid substance aiming to prevent pollution by controlling the discharge of harmful chemicals. Number 3. Cargo Securing Manual. Reference from SOLAS Chapter 6, Regulation 5.1. Justification. Ensures that the securing of cargoes including chemical is done in a safe and compliant manner to prevent accidents or spills during transport. Number 4. Certificate of Fitness for the Carriage of Dangerous Chemicals in Bulk. Number 5. International Certificate of Fitness for the Carriage of Dangerous Chemicals in Bulk. Number 6. International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. Number 7. Shipboard Marine Pollution Emergency Plan. Number 8. International Certificates of Competency for Operators and Pleasure Crafts. So these certificates and documents collectively aim to safeguard the environment, protect human life at sea, ensure the safe transport of chemicals in bulk by chemical tankers aligning with international upon conventions and regulations. So you can write all these 7 to 8 certificates name and reference and justification. I know it's difficult to remember all these names but uh, there are only few this type of questions which from where you have to by heart all these things. So you, you have to do that. There is no other option. Let's move on to the last question. With respect to hazardous area of tankers, explain the term flame proof for electrical equipment. Part B. State the type of electrical equipment that would be protected in this way. C. Likely defects of flame proof equipment. The same question was asked in July 2023 when I have given my written exams. I attempted this question. And you can find the answer of the same question on SSAP page 22. But as usual, I will take you to ChatGPT for the better and structured answers with respect to hazardous area of tankers. Explain flame proof for electrical equipment. So let us see the definition first. Flame proof as often denoted by EXD is a type of protection applied to the electrical equipment to prevent the ignition of flammable gases, vapors or dust in hazardous area. Flame proof enclosures are designed to withstand internal explosions and contain any flames or sparks within the enclosure preventing them from reaching the surrounding hazardous atmospheres. Now, what are the key features of this enclosed construction, ceilings, explosion proof components, temperature control. You can read all these details uh, for your answers. Application on tankers, compliance and standards. Please read all these answers and make a short answer for your uh, question. Now state the type of equipments which can be protected using this. So lighting fixtures can be protected, switches and sockets, control panels, jun junction box, motor and starters, transformers, write one one line of uh, all these things, control instruments, communication devices, heating elements, usually flame proof equipments are uh, posted on the deck side where there are chances of hazardous gases. Now what are the most likely defects of the flame proof equipment? So while flame proof equipment is designed to prevent the release of sparks or flames into hazardous equipment. It can experience defects or issues that compromise it, its integrity. Some likely defects are incomplete sealing, corrosion, mechanical damage, loss, loose or faulty fastenings, worn or damaged EXT components, improper maintenance, increase of contaminants. So even if the washer or whatever, really all these uh, EX equipments, we are not uh, allowed to make any changes to that. So whenever we are doing the maintenance, we have to be very careful. There should be the equipment should be after the maintenance it should be same as how it was in the previous before maintenance improper maintenance increase of contaminants mismatched components failure of flame arresting devices incorrect installations so all these regions can lead to damage to the exd equipment so it is crucial to con conduct regular inspection testing and maintenance to identify and rectify any defects in flame proof equipments additionally Adherence to manufacturer's specification, industry standards and regulatory requirements is essential to ensure the ongoing effectiveness of the flame proof protection in hazardous areas. So in the end, thank you for watching the video and all your suggestions or any mistakes from my side. It is welcome. You can comment or message me. I will make a correction. So thank you and see you in the next video. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.